Hi, I'm Frank. In my last video, I showed how to install the high capacity battery on a SeaDoo switch. In the manufacturer's instructions, the original 18 amp hour battery does not get connected anywhere, but rather the uh, high capacity battery takes all the same terminals uh, and connections that the original battery did. Now, what I'm going to show today is how to install a switch that lets you connect between the original 18 amp hour battery and the new uh, 92 amp high capacity battery. So, you don't want to connect both of them in parallel, as I mentioned in the last video. Uh, do some uh, YouTube searches or uh, Google searches, and you'll find out why two batteries of different capacities, even though they're the same voltage, is not a good idea. You tend to degrade the system and you don't get a full charge on the high capacity battery. You wear the low capacity battery down earlier uh, and that sort of stuff. But putting in a switch that allows you to connect between either one battery or the second battery is what we're going to install so now you always will have a spare battery on board. So let's get started. I'm going to install this block near the uh, positive terminal on the uh, low capacity battery case. This will allow me to run my cords easily. The, uh, as you can see, the, the positive cord is not very long. So if I try to run it up here, I don't have enough length. So I'm going to need to put a block um, down below so that I can attach those cables to that and then uh, run my um, cable to it from the switch. I learned this the hard way from working on cars. Whenever you're working in, in places like this, there's always the distinct possibility that you're going to drop something. If you drop something in here, it'll have a tendency to settle to the lowest point, which is right underneath the engine. And then you got to try to go fishing for it. If it's magnetic, you're lucky because you can just get a magnet down there. If it's not, you may have lost whatever you were, whatever you dropped. So I always put a little microfiber towel down so that if I drop anything, it drops onto the towel. I drilled a single hole and now I'm going to put one of the screws on my block in. So you can see I have that one started and I'll go ahead and screw it the rest of the way in. And it is a good thing that I had this microfiber towel down because I did drop it the first time. And you can see the screw misses the battery so that's not an issue at all. Alright, I have my block installed. Now I'm going to move these wires over to the block. That's going to disconnect my battery because this is where everything is going to connect to to go back to the uh, engine. All right, I've got all my connections from the boat to my block. So all that's in place. That's tightened up. Now I just need to add my switch and the wiring to the switch and then back to each of the uh, two battery terminals. Now when I did this, I disconnected the negative. Remember always disconnect the, uh, the ground before you disconnect the positive. So I disconnected that before I disconnected anything else. Here is my switch. So there's one, one and two, two, and then off. And here's the connections on the uh, inside. I used a little Dremel to cut out these side pieces um, so that I would have a little bit neater looking insta installation. If I'm going to check the connections. Uh, I'm going to use a volt ohm meter just to make sure that the switch is doing what it's supposed to do. So I'm going to put it between terminals and um, make sure when I turn the switch that it does what it's supposed to. Alright, I checked it all with the volt ohm meter and the switch is doing what, it what it's supposed to. So now it's time to put it in the boat.
end of my switch on the inside, which I'll show you in a minute, but I placed my plate and drilled the first hole. So I'm going to use that as a template and drill the other holes. I'm going to go from this side to the inside because it's a lot easier to get to. All right, so there's my uh, plate. I supported one. I'm going to drill the other uh, three holes. And the switch will go here over to the other side, and you can see how it's uh, bolted in. Here's my switch. All of the ground is connected together, but the what I have is the number one, which is that direction, is going to be this uh, original 18 amp hour battery. On the post, that's the um, high capacity battery. And then down below, is the uh, where everything connects together. That's my um, right there's my block that comes up to the output on the switch. And that one to the original battery and then over here to the high capacity battery. Each one has a um, cable for solar charging. Uh, they're all uh, independent. The solar charging is independent of each other. Uh, they don't run in parallel nor do they run with the switch. Um, they're basically just uh, uh, two separate uh, connectors. If I wanted to have two solar chargers I could or just swap one and then the other. The switch is relatively easy to get to. You still have to take this uh, engine compartment section off to get to it, but I don't expect that I'll be changing that setting uh, very often at all. It mostly is set up as an emergency so that if the primary battery were to be too low, I could just switch the secondary battery to start the uh, uh, switch. So. I tested everything. Uh, everything works fine. Uh, battery 1 will start the engine, battery 2 will start the engine, and um, we're ready to pack it up. So if you want to have the dual battery system, this is a decent way of doing it. It's easy to do and uh, you know, with minimal effort. See you on the water.